Welcome to Electron Line. In the previous video, we started with the separation of the variables, position and time in the Schrodinger equation. We ended up with these two equations, which were set equal to a constant. We don't know yet what that constant is equal to, but we do now have on the left side here an equation that only depends on position, and on the right side an equation that only depends on time. These are now two differential equations. In order to come up with a a Schrodinger equation that only depends on position, we're going to start with this equation. But before we do that, we need to solve for c, and we're able to do that with taking this part of the equation, the one that only depends on time. Let me show you how that's done. So we're taking this equation, we're going to separate the variables. On the left side, we're going to end up with this. The derivative with respect to time, or the differential with respect to time of the wave equation, the part that only depends on time, and we divide that by the wave equation, which depends on time. On the right side, we're going to have a c, a dt, and divided by i and h bar. All right, next what we can do is we can integrate both sides. And if we do that on the left side, we're going to get the natural log of that wave function. And on the right side, this will simply be t, because c, i, and h bar are simply constants. So we end up with c divided by i, h bar times t. Now I'm not going to add another constant of integration, because I already have a constant of integration here. And then so it just simply would just become another c. What I am going to do here is multiply both the top and the bottom by i. So multiply that by i divided by i. And i times i is i squared, which is equal to a negative 1, which then simply means by moving the i to the numerator, I have to put a negative in front of that. So this ends up being the natural log of the wave function as a function of time is equal to negative i, because i times i is a negative 1. I keep this i right here, times c times t divided by h bar. Now I'm going to take the antilog of both sides. So I'm going to write e to that exponent, e to this exponent. So I end up with e to the natural log of the wave function is equal to e to the minus i times c over h bar times t. And of course, this negates. And we can then write that the phase, the um, wave function as a function of time is equal to e to the minus i c over h times t. Now this is the exponential form of the equation. This does not yet allow us to figure out what c is equal to. So what we're going to do now is we're going to rewrite this as a sum of the sine and the cosine. So let's come over here. And so now we can say that the wave function is equal to, well, we have the cosine of this angle, which would be c over h bar times t minus, because there's a minus up here, i times the sine of that angle, which would be c over h bar times t. Now remember that h bar is equal to h divided by 2 pi. So I'm going to take out the 2 pi, write them in the numerator, because we have h bar in the denominator. And so this cannot be written as follows. Cosine of 2 pi times c over h, not h bar anymore because we took the 2 pi out, times t minus i times the sine of 2 pi times c over h times t. Now notice that these two functions, the cosine and the sine, look a lot like this form, like the cosine of, and you know what, might as well write up the whole function because it makes it easier to see. Let's do that. So this looks a lot like this form where we have the wave function as a function of time is equal to the cosine of 2 pi f t minus i times the sine of 2 pi f t, if we assume that f is equal to c divided by h. Now that should ring a bell. So if c is equal to, not c, is if f, if f is equal to c divided by h, and remember the energy of a photon can be written, 
So the energy of a photon can be written to be H times F. Then we can see, well, this can then be re rewritten as F times H equals C. Well, if F times H equals C and H times F equals the energy of a photon, I can then simply replace uh, where are we? C by E. So in other words, C is equal to E, which means it's going to be the total energy of the particle. So E, this is equal to the total. Now we can come back over here and rewrite the equation. So by putting in this form, I now realize that I can figure out what C is equal to. C is equal to the total energy of the particle. Now we take this form of the equation back, and now we simply replace C by E. So now we know that the wave function, the portion of it that depends on the time only, is going to be equal to E to the minus I, E over H, H bar, can't forget the H bar here, E over H bar times T. And that's what I was after. Now what I have here is a solution to the Schrodinger equation. This tells me that the wave function that only depends on time for a single particle with mass m, that is in one dimension, can be written in this format. It can be written in as an exponential as e to the minus i e over h bar times t. Now that I know what c is equal to, it's equal to the energy of the total particle, I can now plug that into this equation and do the same with the left side equation that allows me now to find the Schrodinger equation that only depends on position and that's of course what I was after in the first place. So let's do part three of this, then I can find the solution to this equation that will satisfy the Schrodinger equation as a function of position only. So stay tuned and watch us do the next one.